Hey again! In this lesson we're going to talk about some things you should be thinking about when you create test programs for the projects that you're working on. And learning how to test effectively is really one of the most important skills that you can develop as a computer programmer. It's right up there with being able to use the debugger effectively because if you can't figure out if your program is working then you're not going to know if you've actually achieved your goal. So in this lesson we're going to talk about what you should expect to put in a test program, the different types of testing you can do, and then some suggestions for uh, ways to make sure that you are testing your program thoroughly enough. So a test program is just a separate class that we use when we're trying to test the methods for one or more other classes that we've just written and depending on the type of testing we're doing would depend on if we're going to be testing one class at a time or several of them together. And That's where we talk about the different types of testing. The simplest kind is called unit testing and like it sounds that's when we test one class at a, uh, at a time. And you should always do unit testing before you try to do any other kinds of testing because you can't tell if two classes work well together unless you can first be sure that they each work by themselves. And when it does come to put the classes together, then we're talking about uh, integration testing. That's where you are testing to make sure that class A can call methods from class B and the behavior is what you were expecting. And the last type of testing, which is in some sense uh, could be examples of either of the first two, but it's really a special type of testing is called regression testing. Regression, just like it sounds, means going back. And in regression testing, what you're really doing is you're testing all the old tests. You're running all the old tests that you used to run after you make changes to a class to make sure that the changes you made didn't break anything that used to be working. Uh, sometimes when you try to add a feature to a class or when you try to fix another class, it has a bad unintended side effect of breaking something that you thought was already working. So it's always a good idea to go back and test your whole program after you make a major change. Even the stuff that you think might be working might not be working now. So that's regression testing. As far as things to think about as far as what you should be testing, I mean you can't test every single possible situation especially if you're dealing with a program involving user input um, but you know more to the point you don't have to um, you want to try to approach testing by thinking about the types of situations that would cause your program to break and in particular um, you want to try to test a couple of different things you want to try to obviously make sure that it works the way that you expected it to so it is useful to test it with uh, expected behavior because that's probably the easiest to predict what might happen. But it's also really important, especially again when you start working with the users, that you anticipate what unexpected things might happen. I know that sounds hard to anticipate the unexpected, but try and pretend you were the user and pretend that you don't follow directions or you screw up or you type words when you're supposed to type numbers or you hit the wrong arrow key. Um, all of those things are possible and all of them will probably break your program and it's not a valid excuse to say well we didn't expect the users to do that. Um, that means that you really didn't test your program and make it robust enough. The last thing that you should probably be thinking about when you're testing, particularly if you're testing something involving a large range of numbers or something with a wide possibility is try to test at the edges because typically speaking it's the edge cases that cause your program to break. It's that time when someone types in a negative number or they type in a really big number. Um, numbers that would be right on the boundary of what you would expect or just outside the boundary of what you would expect are typically the things which if they're going to be problems are going to show those problems. Doing more than one test involving the middle of your range of numbers is usually a waste of time. So what specifically should go into the syntax of your test program? Well, it's a separate class, just like we talked about. 
So inside the main method for this class, the first thing you're going to want to do is to create an object of whatever the other class is that you're testing. Then you're going to want to make sure that you call whatever methods that you're trying to test at the time. And then you need to uh, call whatever accessor methods you can use that tell you if the um, methods that you were trying to test actually worked. So you better make sure that the class has those accessor methods uh, because otherwise you really won't be able to verify that things are working properly. And then the other thing which is really important that your book mentions is for every test that you run, you should have a separate printout statement where you print what the correct answer is. And so part of writing a good test program is you being able to predict in advance what kind of expected behavior you will see. If you're not able to determine what the actual correct results were, then it means that you probably need to rethink your code, or at least you need to make sure that you understand it better. So let's review. We talked about the different kinds of testing. We talked about unit testing and integration testing and regression testing. And then we talked about how you really need to make sure that you consider all different kinds of behavior when you're writing your test programs and that when you call the methods that you're trying to test and then call your accessor methods that you make sure to also print out the correct results so that you can use them for easy comparison purposes. Okay, uh, let's take a look at an example of how that works. So here we have a uh, program with a pretty simple method. Uh, this method is really trivial but for the example that we're doing we might as well start with something simple. So if I was going to test this method, um, what I would want to do is to create a brand new class. We'll call this tester sounds fine. And then inside of our main method, first thing I'm going to do is to create an object of that class. So the name of my class is test needed. And now I'm going to test that method. So the name of the method that I was going to test was get average, and it takes two parameters, the total and the count. So what if I test it with expected behavior? So if I was to say uh, double answer gets tester dot get average of, I don't know, 150 total among 10 scores, I print that value, and then remember, you have to make sure that you print what you expect it to be. In this case, we expect it to be 15.0. So let's save our program, and then compile and run it and it looks like we got the answer that we were expecting. There are other conditions that I would definitely want to test. I would definitely want to test what happens if the number of scores is zero because we should expect some sort of an error to calculate that average and maybe a couple of other things to put in as well. So uh, that's a good example of what a test program might look like and now you're all set.